uh, and I noticed it this morning. I sat down in the in the hotel and I'm looking out over Tokyo, mm -hmm. and everybody's going around their business. People with umbrellas and yeah. young women and men with all their white uh, and mm -hmm. so on, and it all it looks perfectly normal. Right. And at Aizu Wakamatsu, it looks perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. Probably, if you went within five kilometres of the actual accident site, it would look perfectly normal. You wouldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. But actually, what you have there is um, is an enormous amount of radioactivity and a lot of particles floating around the place that, that can kill you, and you just right. can't see them. Right, exactly. And you don't know that they're there because you don't have eyesight that mm. see ra radioactivity, and unless you carry a Geiger counter, right. you can't measure it. Right. And even if you carry a Geiger counter, you can be misled by the fact that it's saying so many microsieverts per hour, mm. when in reality, what mm. the problem is, is is nothing to do with the microsieverts per mm. hour. It's the stuff that produces the microsieverts per hour that's floating about in the air, mm. and then it goes inside you. So, so this is th th when you know this, you don't want to go very close to these places. A lot of my colleagues are dead. Right. They went to Chernobyl. Right. We would like to ask. We would like to ask you uh, the results from your car filter experiment. Okay. Uh, just briefly mention right. that. And okay. So, so I have to say that first of all, this is quite. Um, this is just preliminary results. We have had. We've looked at five car filters, mm -hmm. uh, one of them from Chiba City and four of them from somewhere along the 100 kilometer uh, mark, mm -hmm. but one of them drove within 30 kilometers of, of the plant. Mm -hmm. um, and what they show is that all of the Fukushima ones show higher levels than the, than the Chiba City one, right. but the Chiba City one still is quite high. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, what they, and they all contain uh, gamma-emitting isotopes which are certainly from the plant. And the evidence is also that they contain uranium, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more difficult to be sure about the uranium. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, w uh, one, of the f one of the filters we tested for alpha, alpha particles, and what this shows is that they do contain alpha emitters mm -hmm. and at least one uh, alpha emitting particle, which was about 0.5 millimeter diameter. Mm -hmm. So that's what we found. We, we, we are also, of course, um, th they are still being analysed with more sophisticated equipment to look mm -hmm. for plutonium, and we'll know about that in a couple of weeks' time. So then the question is, what does that mean? It means, basically, it means that the concentration in air of cesium-137 is about 1,000 times higher mm -hmm. than it was at the top of the nuclear t weapons testing in 1963. Wow. Okay. So that is really quite serious because mm -hmm. we know that the nuclear weapons testing in 1963 caused an increase in infant mortality and caused a cancer epidemic 20 years later. Right. But this is 1,000 times higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, and in Chiba City it was 300 times higher than that. Mm -hmm. So the ratio is about 3 to 1. Mm -hmm. Which makes me feel that probably their significant uh, radioactive exposures to the south of Tokyo, you know, so further away mm -hmm. even. Yeah, the, the final thing that we seem to see, seems to show is that the radioactivity is is not uniformly distributed. Mm -hmm. We kind of knew that anyway, but right. this 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 confirms it. So there's some parts, some areas where it's quite high, mm -hmm. some areas where there's not very much of it. And this is exactly like Chernobyl. So mm -hmm. if you look at maps of the contamination on the ground from Chernobyl, it's rather like a leaf shape with lots mm -hmm. of lobes coming out, mm -hmm. uh, and they tend to go along river valleys. So that's what we found there. And now, so what, what, what do we no do next? Right. Well, what, what has to, a number of things, but, but the first thing is that people who live in these areas where the radioactivity is, is, is high, mm -hmm. where these air concentrations are high, uh, should leave. And in particular, the children should be got out, because children are, are more, um, up to 10 times more sensitive to radiation. Right. Uh, and of course, they're not going to suddenly die, but all, this, all of this stuff is mm. going to happen sometime in the future, but mm -hmm. it certainly is going to happen. So it is, uh, it is already an assault on these people in, in a sort of legal sense, mm -hmm. and they should get, they, and, and, but if they get out now, then it won't get any worse, right. yes? Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the government must uh, urgently overfly the area and mm -hmm. produce accurate radiation density maps, mm -hmm. which, is, which, which is old technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no problem about this. Could have done it long ago, and maybe they even have. Mm. Because the people need to have the information. Mm -hmm. uh, the information is just not there. Mm. 
Uh, this information has to be printed out and put on the internet, and everyone needs to know what. what so they know where they can go and where they can't, where it's going to be radioactive, where it isn't going to be radioactive, mm -hmm. and then they can make their decision about this. Mm -hmm. Then, in my opinion, areas that are contaminated at, at approximately the same level as the Chernobyl exclusion zone should be fenced off, and, mm -hmm. and this is nothing to do with 30 kilometers. Some right. of this stuff is either 120 kilometers, mm -hmm. and if this was like your if this was poison gas mm -hmm. and it was going to kill you tomorrow, people would be, be running. They'd be running. Right. But what I'm saying is it is poison gas. It's just not going to kill you tomorrow. It's going to kill you like a few years' Ten time, years. see? But, you know, the third thing is that people who have to remain in areas of slightly lower radioactivity but which are still contaminated mm -hmm. should be compensated. Uh, because this is an assault. It's, it's just the same as if someone was hit on the head with a, with a log. Right. You know? Uh, they've been assaulted, Some, uh, their bodies have been contaminated with material which uh, has a significant chance of killing them. Mm. And under any legal system in the world, this mm. is illegal, this mm. is against the law. So what can you do about that? Well, you, you can certainly compensate them for that. And the people who should compensate them are, of course, the people who contaminated them, mm -hmm. so the nuclear industry. And also, therefore, the, the, comp yeah, the compensation, uh, not just from the Japanese nuclear industry, but also from the international nuclear industry, because I see this as kind of global, this is a sort of global problem. Right. Right, the, uh, the next thing you have to do is you have to with, uh, throw s as much money as the world has mm -hmm. at sealing those reactors. Mm -hmm. if, it, if, you have to, if you have to mine underneath them and put concrete bases and then put a dome over the top of them, and if it costs a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. then it has to be done. Right. Because this is this stuff's coming out all the time, mm. and it's going to slowly make the whole of North Japan into a radioactive wasteland, like mm. Ma Mad Max or some horror movie from the future. Mm. But not only that, it's going to get ar all around the globe. We picked up plutonium in England. There's plutonium in Hawaii. There's plutonium in Guam. There's mm -hmm. plutonium in in the western part of the United States. Mm -hmm. So, so this is a global problem, and it needs a global solution. So it's not enough to say, oh, well, it's the Japanese people's problem, you know, the tough luck and all the rest of it. It's got to be sorted out very quickly because mm. because huge amounts of these radionuclides are coming out of those reactors every minute mm. and, and nothing is stopping them. Mm. So, no, yes, though, there was one other thing that has to be, you have to, you have to monitor the air uh, concentration of these substances. So mm. there has to be a ring, just in the United Kingdom we have but nuclear sites, we put a ring of monitors around them. Uh, the government at the moment is not publishing the concentrations of a whole range of radionuclides which are extremely serious. Mm -hmm. All they do is they go around there and they measure cesium. Strontium-90, right. tritium, plutonium, uranium. Uranium mm -hmm. we now know to be one of the most serious uh, genotoxic elements yes. you know, in this form of particles that has ever existed. Mm -hmm. In this study that I did in Fallujah, um, we found uranium in the hair of, of, the, ch of the parents mm -hmm. of the children and we found enormous levels of congenital malformation huge levels of cancer mm -hmm. as a result of exposure to uranium. It's a nightmare. Well, you I'm said that before, you said that so, several lectures, you've said that um, this is the Fukushima problem issue. It's something that could trigger to change the whole world and how we can change the nuclear industry of the world. And, um, and so we were wondering why you think that why you think that this Japan uh, Fukushima problem or disaster yeah. can lead to change in the world stance? Okay, well, the, the, the culture of the world has become complacent with regard to these sorts of science-based threats. And Fukushima, the Fukushima problem has brought everybody up short, suddenly, out of the blue. Mm. There has been this accident which, which is, has, has unimaginably serious consequences. Mm -hmm. And what, what I believe it will do is to cause everyone to start questioning scientists, mm. to start questioning experts, and to start questioning the way in which we see the world in terms of truth that's handed down by experts and expert scientists, mm -hmm. who are actually nowadays not, not even really experts and not even really scientists in the sense that I understand the scientist who is somebody who searches for the, for the truth for the sake of the truth. Mm. And what I think I've said and I, and I believe that scientists nowadays are bought and sold by a big business. And so what the scientists will tell you and what the scientists will find is what big, big, big business uh, or, or even governments need in order to make money and mm. to be competitive in a sort of market forces jungle. Mm. Uh, and of so, so actually nuclear power 
is, an abs is a perfect icon for the way in which the human race has gone astray mm -hmm. with regard to the most important things that, 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 that people, um, people need and people want. And so we, all, we are all kind of living in some sort of madhouse now where we're told what to do by scientists. And I hope, and I believe, that this Fukushima thing and, and the appallingness of it will cause everybody to sit up straight and say, we have to rethink the way in which we see the world. Mm -hmm. We have to rethink the way in which scientists work and, and how we believe them, and whether we believe them. Mm. Uh, and it, it's been coming a long time, this is not new, that, 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 that this groundswell of opinion mm. with regard to the, uh, the effects of science on, on everyday life has been growing slowly, 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 to it's got to a point now where it's almost like an explosive mass. Interesting. And I will hope that this particular um, disaster, and that's partly why I'm here, because mm. it will catalyze a total reappra reappraisal of, of this area, yeah. because it's not just nuclear, although mm. nuclear is a perfect example of it and mm. it enables us to go into there and see what's happened, mm. but it also uh, covers an enormous uh, uh, set of, of problems that the human race is facing. Mobile phones, are they dangerous? Right. Genetically modified mm. food, is it dangerous? You know, is there really global warming and if there is, what can we do about it? And in all of these areas, we rely upon or well, I say we don't, but, the, but, but, but governments and policy makers rely upon evidence or, and, and advice that come from scientists who study these things. Mm. And what I want to say, but my message, is that these scientists are telling lies. For whatever reason, they're telling lies. So we have to actually... We have to find a way of, of, of doing science which is value-free. Mm -hmm. And there is such a way. There is such a way. It's not impossible. So it's almost like we're, we individuals have to be aware of it, to be alert whether this information that this yeah, scientist is yes, releasing yeah. is, whether it's true or not. We're kind of, we're, kind of on, we're, on the, we're on the, we're on the deck of the Titanic and the mm -hmm. captain is steering according to a plan which has been given to him by people who are false and who are lying mm -hmm. and are doing it for money. Hi, Chris Busby, the interview of Chris Busby, the interview of Chris バズビ博士の報告や分析を聞いていますと日本政府の行っている政策が非常に甘いのではないかということが分かってきます特に福島市や日本松市、郡山市など非常に放射線の高い地域で避難を含めてですねあまり対策が取られていないということで今後、ですねチェルノブイリ並みのせめてそうした対策が必要だというふうに感じました。この番組は市民ができる当事者の声を伝える番組を目指しています。ぜひ、身近な出来事や特集にしてほしいことなどをファックスやメールでこちらにお送りください。